kids in self-isolation are saying they have had enough and some parents are feeling it as well. Joining me to talk a little bit more about the joys and pains of teaching and parenting during COVID-19 is Roxanne Francis, psychotherapist and mom of two, Mike Slack, a pastor and dad of two, and Nathan Watley, a teacher and parent of three. Thanks for joining me all. Thanks for having us. Glad to be here. Okay, Mike, I'm gonna ask you first, how's it going? How's being a teacher and a dad and all of it in between, how's it all going? Well, I think it's uh, much like anyone else. I'm struggling to figure out what the new norm is. Um, I'm not a teacher. So that's uh, my first realization is that uh, I struggle to do that, but it's important for my kids and uh, it's something that I'm willing to do. So overall, I think we're doing fine. My kids like each other and get along well. I think that's the big <laughs> thing. And, uh, and uh, the rest of it is just trying to figure out how to do this well. Yeah, I think that's the key, doing it well. Nathan, you're in an interesting uh, position because you're a teacher yeah. and you're a parent of three kids and uh, you live in Quebec, the lone province right now, the bold province who has opened some of its schools this week. What has it been like for you? It, it, well, I was hearing what Mike was saying and it's similar because even though you're a teacher at school, the kids at home don't uh, give you the same kind of cred that they would give you <laughs> if you were at the at the school. Um, so, uh, yeah, tantrums, fights happens at home all the time. Kids don't want to do with the work that's assigned. But uh, as a teacher, I also have an idea of what needs to be done. So I'm maybe a bit more demanding than uh, other parents would be. Um, so, so, yeah, it sounds a bit the same. And then there's also the work demands of trying to keep up with kids at home. Some of them who respond to the emails that I get sent out, some of them that don't, all that. So it's, it's been a bit tricky. Yeah, I want to delve into your story in a little bit. Roxanne, as a psychotherapist and also mm -hmm. a parent, yes. I think so many, and I, I don't know if this, it could just be me. There are so many expectations we put on ourselves as yes. well in this scenario. Talk about that and how to keep our expectations realistic. And I think that's a part of the stress that we face. Um, we put so many expectations on ourselves. We expect ourselves to be the teacher now because that's what we're doing. Um, some of us are working from home and we're expecting to have this magical balance. Well, there's no magic and there's very little balance. Yeah. And so we have to be realistic. We have to figure out um, what are we going to be able to, to give to our children in terms of education um, our stress levels are high, so we really have to pull back on some of the expectations if we're going to make it through this. Yeah, I think that's really well said. Nathan, as a teacher, how do you make sure that when you're communicating with the parents of your students that they don't feel like, oh my goodness, I can't handle this. I'm not a teacher. I wasn't built for this. And, and also just succumb to these expectations. Uh, it's, it's been really tricky because even um, as... Um, like, it's a bit different than in Ontario where there's been uh, teaching done at home, but uh, we were given the instructions at the beginning of the, the, this whole process to, to not put any heavy expectations on the parents. Mm. And, and now, weeks later, it's suddenly the, 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 the message has changed now that schools are restarting. It's like, well, start teaching the kids, even the ones that aren't coming to school, from home. So it's been, uh, uh, I actually spent a lot of the morning uh, yesterday and this morning trying, like, sending out emails and letting parents know that, no, the rules have changed a little bit, and now we're trying to up expectations. And I think you have an interesting perspective because you are a parent, so you know what it's like to juggle those two worlds, right? So have you had to fight with maybe expectations that you've put on yourself for your own children? My hope is that the kids will enjoy what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes the assignments sent home aren't particularly enjoyable, but you know, depending on what expectations the teachers give, um, I we're supposed to do them or not and and, uh, and yeah so I, I've kind of given myself permission to because maybe because I, I'm a, I, I feel like I know what I'm doing I've given myself permission to kind of go off script and do it my own way mm. and, and I feel like parents should also have that permission too because they don't necessarily know what this how it's supposed to work and they know their kids even better than teachers know the kids yeah. so so it, it's I think it's a matter of, of figuring out what works for the kids and not necessarily um, you know what exactly the teacher wants from them 
That's so, yeah, that's such a great point. Mike, um, in a recent Angus Reid study, uh, they, they surveyed some kids and the biggest worry that most of the kids had was missing school and missing their friends. What kind of conversations have you had to have with Kate and Thomas about, you know, they're young and missing yeah. just the routine of day to day? Yeah, it's, it's always a challenge. I think they're old enough to understand the seriousness of COVID-19 and the, the, the reason for staying home, but that doesn't necessarily help them uh, feel any better about missing their friends. So we're lucky we have a lot of kids in our neighborhood that, uh, that they interact with, um, uh, our next door neighbor. So they talk and play over the fence and, uh, and their friends come down to visit. And um, it, I think they're starting to realize just the value of friendship and connection. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of like uh, the next door neighbor, his birthday happened last week. And so they went outside and rode on the road in chalk on the sidewalk and, and, and left him a present and stuff. Just those little things of saying, yeah, it's really important that we just recognize each other and, and stay connected in some way, shape or form. So I think it's a real learning experience for them. And I'm curious to know what that will look like once this is all done and they're back to normal, if it will help them appreciate those little things. Yeah, Roxanne, you know, as we, talk about the conversations that we might be having with our children more, like the importance of friendship, something that we yes. can take for granted. I yes. know that you've had to do something a little unique and different for your own boys to, to help them to stay connected with their friends as they just anxiously go through this journey. Yes, um, so my boys are eight and five and my eight-year-old is a very social little boy and he had a bit of a meltdown the other day, just, you know, I, I don't know where my friends are, I can't see them, and I miss them very much. And so, um, because of the nature of my work, I happen to have a Zoom account. And so, I was able to um, email a couple of the parents whose email addresses I had, and I said, you know, your kid's free on Friday at this time. And so, we organized a Zoom sort of party for the kids. Mm -hmm. And his face just completely lit up when he sat in front of the screen, because now he's having a meeting like mommy. And, <laughs> and then as each friend signed on, his voice just got louder and louder, more animated. And they just were besides themselves with the joy of connecting with each other. And so now we try to do that every couple of weeks when that's available. And um, he really looks forward to it. And uh, you know, recently we did a drive by birthday party. One of his friends yeah. had a birthday and so, the parent organized for all of us to drive around and you know just stop by the the driveway and say hello and so we have to find different ways for the children to connect because they really miss each other and that's a part of their their social structure it's a part of the way that they understand the world and so that's one of the reasons why kids are missing that so much it's causing uh, so much stress for them and anxiety okay hold that thought we'll be right back with part two